What is up guys, I am Get Flanked, and a question that I get asked a lot is something along the lines of, hey, I'm a beginner, I'm getting started in this game, what operator do you recommend that I use? And it's always tough giving one size fits all advice like this because different players have different skill sets and backgrounds and different play styles. But I thought I would put together my top two operators, one for attack, one for defense, for beginners. This is designed for the average player out there who I would recommend that they buy first and use first when they are getting started in this game. I'm also going to give you an honorable mention on both sides. Um, so that's what we're going to do in today's video. I'm looking for input from you guys um, that have been playing this game for a a while if you disagree with the operators that i suggest tell me why and give the viewers your suggestions on who you would recommend the first two operators one on attack one on defense would be for a beginner Okay, let's get started on defense, and you may notice it from the gameplay, but the defender that I'm going to recommend for a beginner, the first one that I feel like everybody should buy in this game is Rook. And there's lots of reasons for that, but the number one of which is probably his gadget. The fact that he has the armor that you lay down at the beginning of the round, you are going to help the team no matter what. So you lay the armor down, your teammates pick it up, no matter what you do for the rest of the round, even if you die in the first five seconds of the round, you have still helped the team. Another reason that I recommend Rook is it's going to allow you, as a beginner, to simplify the game. And you can see from the gameplay right now, what I'm doing with him is what I would recommend you do. You can anchor on the objective and hold angles with his ACOG. And that's extremely effective and tough to play against, to be completely honest with you. It is tough to play against a Rook in the objective holding really skinny angles with the ACOG. And you don't need a ton of map knowledge in order to do this. You're not going to be out there roaming around. You're not going to have to know where the, the enemy is likely to breach and stuff like that. Um, and it just allows you to, again, just make the game a lot simpler than it is if you're running around trying to roam or stuff like that. Another way that it's going to simplify the game for you as a beginner is you're only going to be using one site on both attack and defense, the ACOG. If you're running Rook, definitely recommend that MP MP5 with the ACOG. That's the way you should definitely be setting it up. Um, and then when you're attacking, you're going to be running an operator with an ACOG more than likely as well. And the ACOG versus the Reflex and other sites have different sensitivities, different you know site pictures. And when you're starting out, if you're switching between those two sites, between defense and attack, you're having to learn both of those at the same time. And that just further complicates this game. If you can use an ACOG on both defense and attack, in my opinion, it's going to help you learn that sensitivity faster. You're going to be able to overcome the fact that this game does not have auto aim and learn to get that really, um, really good aim in this game faster. There's also the fact that he is a three armor. It's going to allow you to handle, you know, getting shot up some, unless they're headshots, of course. But you can see that in this clip that you're watching right now. I do take some bullets, I survive, and I end up winning the round. So as a beginner, if you can, you know, take some bullets and survive and live to fight another day, that's going to help because you're probably going to expose yourself more than you will once you learn all the angles and where people are likely to look into the objective from. As far as his loadout, I'm going to recommend the MP5K with the ACOG, the foregrip, and then the flash hider. The reason I run flash hider is because when you're holding those long skinny angles, you should be burst firing. And that flash hider is going to help you with those two to three shot bursts more than a compensator would. Also run impact grenades, that way you can open up rotations for your teammates. So that's why I love Rook for a beginning operator. As far as my honorable mention on defense, I'm going to go with Jaeger. And this may surprise some of you guys, but the reason I say Jaeger is because I feel like anybody who's familiar with playing Call of Duty, anybody who's familiar with playing Battlefield, will be able to jump in with Jaeger and feel comfortable on his gun, feel comfortable with the fact that he's at three speed, and just play the game in a more similar way to how they played Call of Duty and Battlefield. And that's not necessarily a good thing, but... The, the players who are playing this game for the first time, they're not used to playing the game like I recommend you play with Rook, and that is sitting in objective, holding angles. That's that's not how people are used to playing first-person shooters. That's, a, that's kind of unique to Rainbow in a lot of ways. So if that player wants to jump in this game and try to play like uh, it's a Call of Duty or a Battlefield, which is a mistake, I'm not saying that's what they should do, but if they're going to do that, Jaeger is probably the best operator to suit that. And um, the reason I don't recommend them, the reason I don't put them in front of Rook is well, what I just said. First of all, that's a mistake. That's not how you should be playing this game because if you don't have map, map knowledge, you're going to take a lot of easy deaths. You're going to be a really easy kill for the enemy in a lot of circumstances. 
The other reason is that his ADS gadget does require some map knowledge, not a ton, but some. You need to know the windows and the areas that enemies are likely to try to throw grenades or smokes or stuff like that through. Um, and just overall, I just feel like Jaeger, you need a little bit more game knowledge to use him effectively. And if you're taking him as a beginner and you're taking him away from a more experienced player, you're not doing your team much good. You're actually probably doing the team harm. Okay, so let's start talking about the attackers now. And the attacker that I'm going to recommend for the beginner is going to be Sledge. And the reason I recommend Sledge is because he's just an extremely well-rounded operator. And he just makes sense. Everything about his kit makes sense. It's stuff that you're not going to have to have a ton of knowledge in order to understand and be able to get some use out of. If you take his gadget, for example, it's a big hammer that puts holes in soft walls and floors and hatches. So if you are using it, it doesn't require much depth. It's pretty easy to understand. It's also going to indirectly teach you the importance of like a Habana. If you see a hatch that's reinforced, your hammer does nothing. It's going to eventually register, oh, okay, that's you know Habana's niche. That's where she fits in to the team and uh, her role. If you look at his loadout, it's extremely good. The L85A2 is what I'm going to recommend as a primary weapon. It's just kind of an above average assault rifle, not a ton of recoil, easy to use and very effective. He also has the SMG11 available as a secondary, which I'm going to highly recommend. The SMG11 is technically the best full auto weapon in the game as far as damage per second. I believe it ranks the highest. So you can make the argument that the SMG-11 is the best weapon in the game for a lot of people. Now, it's got that small mag and extremely high fire rate that you know kind of makes it a little bit harder to use. But once you learn to use that, you're also going to be able to use it on smoke, which is another perk to learning Sledge and learning that SMG-11. Sledge is also going to introduce you to the beginning of vertical play, which is what you're seeing on the screen right now. I'm destroying the floor. And that's important that beginning players start to realize the vertical aspect of this game. A lot of players don't mess with vertical play early enough, and that's something that's very important in this game. And again, another reason that I like Sledge as a beginner because it's going to kind of open your eyes to how important uh, vertical play can be and get you used to exposing vertical angles very early in your progression within this game. As far as the loadout I'm going to recommend with Sledge, the L85A2 is the primary with foregrip, ACOG, and flash hider. That gun does not have enough recoil to justify compensators, so use the uh, perk of the flash hider. Um, I'm also going to recommend the SMG-11 as a secondary with compensator, uh, the site of your choice, really. And then um, as far as the gadget, definitely want the grenades, 100%. Take those grenades. Sledge is just overall a very good, well-rounded operator who can solo queue well. I know a lot of beginners when they're starting out are going to be solo queuing. Sledge can handle pretty much anything he runs into other than reinforced walls and doesn't need a teammate to kind of, you know, open the way for him. All right, so the honorable mention that I'm going to go with on attack is going to be Fuse. And the reason that I recommend Fuse is because he can get you a lot of kills at those lower levels. If you're a beginner and you're playing against other beginners in the lower levels, Fuse is somebody you can get a lot of easy kills with. Again, it kind of comes down to his gadget, not overly complicated. You can use it on barricades, soft walls, or floors, and it can be a nightmare for players at those lower levels who haven't learned how to counter him yet. Uh, he's also got a very good gun. That AK-12 is one of the most underrated guns in this entire game, and I know that Fuse is a uh, three-armor, one-speed, and I think that's why a lot of people don't realize how good this gun is. But that AK-12 is really easy to use, has a very high damage output, um, and is one of the better assault rifles in this game. So between that weapon and the gadget, I feel like Fuse is a very good choice for beginners. What other operator can you take out an entire enemy team with without ever entering the actual building? That's the big thing that you know really jumps out to me with Fuse. I think the reason that I don't put Fuse above Sledge as far as who I recommend as an attacker for a beginner is because... His gadget does require some map knowledge in order to get the most out of, and that's technically true with any gadget in this game. But I remember as a beginner, like during the drone phase, if we didn't actually locate the objective and didn't, you know, have that indicator on the display showing me exactly where it was, if I was fused, I would have no idea as what windows or what walls or anything I should actually put his gadget on. So you do need some map knowledge in order to get 
uh, the most out of his gadget. You can actually waste it if you don't have any map knowledge. Um, so that's one reason I don't put him above Sludge. The other is because he is a three armor one speed, and that can kind of limit your gameplay as far as what you can do with him. If you find yourself inside the map in like a 1v1, you're going to be making a ton of noise while you're moving around, and it's just kind of limited as far as that goes. Okay, guys, that's it. Those are the two operators that I think are the most beginner-friendly in this game. Rook on defense, Sledge as an attacker. Let me know what you guys agree, disagree with. Definitely put that down in the comments. If you enjoyed this, please make sure that you like and subscribe, and I'll have more coming your way here soon.